Welcome to this video lecture. This is Mark Scythian, FAA licensed aerospace technician, airframe power plant and avionics certified. The date today is July 6, 2016. This particular video lecture is going to focus on piston engine volumetric efficiency, also known as percent VE, in regards to the piston engine. Uh, this is a ratio between the actual airflow that enters the cylinder divided by the theoretical airflow rating for the engine. So this is kind of important to mention, especially when you're dealing with turbochargers and superchargers. Uh, but this is also subject to make a separate video to discuss. And this is the real reason why the turbochargers and superchargers are implemented into piston engines, because a piston engine, being an air-breathing machine like any other internal combustion engine, it relies on atmospheric pressure to draw the air in, especially when the airflow into the, in, into the engine is not assisted by any type of forced air induction. Like a gas turbine engine, you know, you have so much forced air induction for the compressor, so that's a whole different ballgame. But the piston engine, you have a piston on the downstroke that draws in air, but it is dependent on the atmospheric pressure. If the atmospheric pressure is not high enough, you're not going to get enough air in the cylinder. And at best, even if you're at sea level, where the atmospheric pressure is the maximum, 14.7 pounds per square inch, you're only going to allow about 80% of the potential airflow to the theoretical rating into the cylinder. So picture the piston on the downstroke and only 80% of its potential air charge is actually drawn in because it's relying on atmospheric pressure. There's no forced air induction into the intake. So a practical way to look at this and understand this clearly is let's say we're dealing with a four-stroke gasoline piston engine which has an air to fuel ratio of 12 to 1. This is the optimal stoichiometry balance between air and fuel on the gasoline four stroke piston engine, where the leanest the fuel mixture can get is 18 to 1, air to fuel mixture that is, and the richest is 8 to 1, and the economy air to fuel ratio is 15 to 1. That's when you're going down the road and driving. But 12 to 1 is the optimal nominal air to fuel ratio mixture. So we'll just stick to 12 to 1 all around uh, the reliant air to fuel ratio. So what this means is that 1 13th of the displacement of the engine, let's say it's 350 cubic inches, one thirteenth of that will be fuel vapors, and twelve thirteenths of it, majority of it, will be, will be air. So at that ratio, you'll have optimal combustion. So what this implies is that when you're dealing with a naturally aspirated piston engine, even at sea level, you're only get you're only going to get eighty percent of the of the potential max airflow tied to the rating. So if that was an engine with 750 cubic feet per minute uh, intake, it would only get 80% of that with a naturally aspirated engine. Now, if you put a turbocharger or supercharger forced air induction system that blows air above atmospheric pressure into the intake, then you're going to allow the 20% that the atmospheric pressure can't provide in induction pressure and force so that the volumetric efficiency between the actual airflow and the theoretical become equal. And that is when you have 100% volumetric efficiency. So that is just getting the maximum airflow rating that the atmospheric pressure itself cannot provide. So if we looked at it in terms of uh, percentages and fractions, 
uh, 12 thirteenths is what the air charge should be of the total cubic inch displacement but then only 80% of that value will make it in based off atmospheric pressure itself. So with a turbocharger and supercharger, the whole purpose of them is to increase the VE to 100%. That's the whole purpose of the turbocharger, not above, not a blow. So you have a wastegate actuator and bellows and control solenoids to make sure it stays at 100 so you can get uh, maximum combustibility of the fuel minimize the amount of unburnt fuel that goes out of the exhaust. So again, if we visit the diagrams, here we have a turbocharger running on the exhaust waste heat and gas velocity, not taking from the crankshaft now. And then we're tapping that one-third loss from the fuel in the form of waste heat to drive a turbine in the turbocharger which then drives the centrifugal flow compressor draws in air from the outside environment compresses it and accelerates it as force induction above atmospheric pressure into then an expansion intercooler to cool that air as you get heat from the compression and so this allows uh, the 20% you can't get from atmospheric pressure to assist the volumetric efficiency up to 100% rating so that a maximum amount of fuel can burn. And of course the supercharger does the same thing but it's engine driven. It's not running off the waste heat. So of course you've seen that in the difference between turbochargers and superchargers video in my YouTube library but it's very important to bring in the topic of volumetric efficiency because that is the only reason why a forced air induction blower is used to bring the VE to 100 percent. So that basically elaborates on the piston, engine, turbocharger, and supercharger. Uh, volumetric efficiency must be discussed when, det when uh, referring to those uh, engine enhancing systems such as force induction blowers i.e. turbocharger or supercharger thanks for watching this video and have a great day